Good morning, and welcome to the community of St. Christopher's Parish as we celebrate the Eucharist on Palm Sunday. This week is the beginning of the holiest week for Catholics and Christians. Celebrations start today with the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. A gentle reminder to put your cell phones on Do Not Disturb. Our celebrant this morning is Father Stephen Kwan, and our homilist is Deacon Mike Minkowski. Please stand for the opening hymn. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. It was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may also have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty and living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. 
Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Session of Jesus in Jerusalem. We're asking all children who are attending children's liturgy to go to the back to meet with Father and to process around the church. So, any children that are joining children's liturgy may go to the back of the church right now. Thank you.
closing eyes are turning to you we turn to you hope is stirring hope is stirring hearts are yearning for you we long for you when we see you that's when we see you find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, 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 come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hope is stirring. Hosanna, Hosanna, you 
are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. This morning's Mass is offered up for Francesco Contrain. Let us pray. Almighty and the living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and you tell the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Please so join the responsorial psalm number 29 in the gather books. Number 29.
second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend on, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Please be seated. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them wherever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, 
Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and whatever he enters, say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room? Where am I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. It is the one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as, as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been, been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the, in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered, but after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is indeed as willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him, and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I, was, I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. 
and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, any one for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. 
the inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and build it in three days? Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani? Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Today's Palm Sunday Mass combines two contrasting, highly charged moments. One is of glory, the joyful welcome of Jesus as King into Jerusalem. And the other is of suffering and death. The high drama of Christ's unjust trial ending in his condemnation, crucifixion, and ultimately his death. It is an especially riveting episode in the life of Christ. Why is this? Because it is a truly human drama. It has the kinds of characters action, plots, and subplots that all of us know because either 
at some point we have experienced or are now experiencing some aspect of them. Who among us has not experienced something of betrayal, fear, humiliation, being lied to, malice from others seeking to cause us harm, or finding oneself completely powerless in the face of manifest injustice. This passion story is not one told in metaphorical language, but a description of something that actually happened in history. And therefore, this makes it our story. But this is where we may become confused. If by understanding how awfully unfair and cruel were the events that took place by the end of Holy Week, we could be forgiven for sharing the bafflement and disillusionment of the disciples at why Jesus chose not to fight against the threat to his life. Why did he so readily submit to his arrest and crucifixion and wholly submit himself to his tormentors? And searching for the answer to these questions, there is a passage in the book of Isaiah from the Old Testament which I suggest is very helpful. Isaiah 55, verse 8 reads, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the interpretive key for the events of Holy Week. My thoughts are not your thoughts. God's purpose in sending Christ to us on a rescue mission that resulted in his crucifixion was to have Christ enter into the very core of the human condition rather than to avoid it. To show solidarity with our suffering, with our moments of agony, with our days of greatest hurt and defeat. And to take upon himself all of our deepest and darkest wounds in order to atone for our sins and to forgive and heal us through his death and most importantly, his resurrection. This was the only way to defeat death. Christ could only accomplish this in an act of supreme humility. In doing so, Christ provides us with the most authentic, vivid, and compelling model for how we are to love, how we are to forgive, how we are to live out Christ's teachings. In a society today that is increasingly cruel and vindictive, and developing, quickly developing amnesia about human dignity. The notion of sacrificial love and mercy is countercultural. Society teaches us to punish and degrade and humiliate people, to cancel them, rather than to forgive and to build them up. And yet, Jesus laid down his life for each of us to show us a better way. And there is a better way. When we offer love and forgiveness to another person, we do so in imitation of God by sowing the seeds of hope 
and new life around us. May I share the following story that I came across the other day and which it seems to me resonates with the story of Holy Week. Two brothers in the United States lived together in the same house. Their parents had died some time ago. The elder brother was an honest, hardworking man with a deep faith in God. But the younger brother had drifted to a life of crime. The elder brother would spend hours pleading with him to mend his ways and to live a decent life. But the younger man would have none of it. One night, the younger brother runs into the house with a gun in his hand and bloods stained clothes. I killed the man, he whispered to his brother. In a few moments, the house was surrounded by the police and the two brothers knew there was no escape. I did not mean to kill him, stammered the younger brother, and I don't want to face the death penalty. The elder brother had an idea. He exchanged his clothes with the blood-spattered clothing of his younger brother. And when the police finally entered the house, they arrested the older brother. The older brother was eventually tried, convicted, and condemned to death for murder. He was executed for his crime, or for the crime of his younger brother. And his younger brother lived. The older brother died for his younger brother. This is the story of Holy Week. It is the story of Christ sacrificing himself to ransom us. Just as the older brother sacrificed himself to ransom his younger brother. Brothers and sisters, since God sent his son to bear the burden of our sins, let us pray with confidence for the good of the church, the salvation of the world, and the needs of all who suffer. For the elect in their final week of preparation for baptism, and for the Pope and all the clergy who will lead us through the celebrations of the Lord's passion, death, and resurrection this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the persecuted Christians and all the people who suffer the passion of Christ in the world today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all young people who seek to follow Jesus and for those searching for happiness and meaning in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our <coughs> prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, especially Joe Robilos and Maggie Pierre, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, especially Herbert Keith Patterson and Jim Marshall, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of eternal glory, who anointed your Son as a suffering servant to bear our sins and raise up the fallen, hear our prayers and grant that by sharing his passion and resurrection, we may share his mission of obedience to your will and bear the victorious sign of his cross, who lived and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us all sing together number 416. Number four, one, six.
Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the Reliant, all oh, be still and behold Him, Jesus, Alpha and Omega, the Lamb, the and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable, God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice may once for all we may feel ready for the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right, right, and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death was washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that we may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we have poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to the second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with this holy spirit may become one body one spirit in christ May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and St. Joseph, her spouse, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession your presence, your life, and failing health. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance in peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity in the Pilgrim Church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis Leo, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have signed before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather yourself, all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind of minutes to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor as you. Forever and ever. 
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as a way to bless all hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the feet of your church, and graciously grant your peace in you to accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, spirit. and let us offer each other the sign of peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, my soul shall be.
is your Sacrament. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as though the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by this resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The religious stove will be open after Mass. The Easter food blessing will take place on Saturday, March 30th at 2 p.m. in the church. Traditionally, people bring decorated Easter eggs, ham, sausages, bread, salt, cheese, and Easter bread. This food is used to break the Paschal fast of Easter. This year, we are having an Easter vigil reception to welcome our newly received Catholic into the parish family. We need helping hands to provide finger foods or serve during the reception. If you would like to help us, please call the parish office. For a detailed schedule of the Holy Week, please see the church bulletin. There is also my pilgrimage in October to Italy. The information is in the back. Airplane, airplane tickets are included in that cost. Air is included. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us all sing together number 390. Number 390.